All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Dino's first Tech Coach Corner webinar panel. Um, I am joined by three tech coaches from our customer network, um, Melanie Lejeune, Justin Keene, and Daniel Mansu. So um, before we dive into this webinar discussion, I will just give a quick overview of Dino, who we are, what our intention is with this webinar, and then what you can expect. And then we'll introduce our panel and dive into this discussion. So just a brief overview on Dino, if any of you attendees are not um, familiar with Dino, we are a classroom management software that helps teachers defeat distractions and keep students on task in digital one-to-one -one learning environments. We support Chromebook, PC, and Mac devices. Um, so our intention with this webinar is since back to school is in full swing, um, we wanted to host a webinar panel similar to um, kind of a a webinar discussion um, where attendees submit questions ahead of time so that you're choosing what the topic is. And so the topic, the broader topic that we decided to choose was back to school roadblocks and tips to overcome them because I'm sure since back to school is in full swing, you've run into a few, to say the least, roadblocks um, while you've been implementing your one-to-one -one device program. So we're joined today by um, three great tech coaches who I've spoken to in the past and they're going to have some great tips on how to overcome these roadblocks. Um, so before the webinar, we sourced questions from our audience. Um, we got a ton of questions submitted and in the interest of time, we weren't able to include all of them in the webinar. So we selected six questions that we thought would be really informative to answer and we'll be answering those. Um, to give an overview, of your webinar experience today. Um, this webinar is being recorded and we will make the recording available to everyone post webinar by the end of the week. Um, and then we are enabling Q&A during the webinar. So if you have any questions throughout, feel free to submit them by exiting the full screen and clicking that Q&A button. Um, and we will answer those at the end if we have time. Um, so without further ado, Let's get started. So these are our webinar panelists. I'm joined, like I said, by Melanie, Daniel, and Justin. Um, I'll go ahead and let you each introduce yourselves. Melanie, if you want to start. Sure. Um, so I'm Melanie Lejeune, and I am at uh, a Catholic high school in Lake Charles, Louisiana. We have about 600 students. Um, I'm also the librarian here, so um, which librarian and tech coach go hand in hand, so um, it gives me a, a, a nice perspective. And um, we've been using Dino for a long time, and actually I have a class, a computer science class in the library right now, and my Dino monitoring is on, <laughs> which is very helpful. Awesome. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Daniel Manso. I am the tech coach at the Edward P. Boland Elementary School in Springfield. Um, we service um, over uh, close to right now 700 students um, with our grade three through five students um, one to one with their devices. We also have been using Dino um, as an invaluable tool for uh, several years. Um, and we have uh, currently, actually, with uh, the amount of uh, technology we have in our school, essentially every student K through five is one to one. But our grade three through five students also have the opportunity to take their laptops home with them. Um, so managing that is also um, another challenge for classroom teachers and um, our school community as a whole to manage. Hi, I'm Justin Keene. I'm the tech facilitator at Huff High School near Charlotte, North Carolina. This is, I think, year four is a, a TF. Um, we have over 2,500 students now. Um, we are one-to-one. -one. We were a pilot for our district, um, and our district has about 150,000 students. Um, we do have some take-home here, um, so again, that is a challenge, like Daniel said. And, and we use Dino. We've used it for a while. It's one of the I got a number of teachers that'll tell you it's their favorite thing in the world to pull up Dino and just kind of minimize it and walk away and leave it and kind of train the students that, hey, we are aware of what's going on, so. Awesome, so yeah, so we have three, you guys are all from different size districts, so I thought it would be really interesting to hear your different perspectives on all of these um, questions we'll be answering. So we will jump into the questions. Let me go ahead and 
stop sharing my screen and we can jump into this discussion. So here we are. Hope everyone can see us okay. Um, so the first question we're going to start with, Daniel, I'll let you take the lead on this one. Um, this was submitted by Kanya H. And she says, we have seven new or beginning teachers this year. I would like to host a PD session to give them information about our one-to-one -one initiative and introduce them to resources. What are some suggested methods? Yeah, Kanye, I really appreciate this question because um, this year we're uh, kind of in the same situation. We have a lot of new staff members who have joined us. And at the same time, our district as a whole has a uh, computer science for all initiative where we're trying to implement computer science standards into all the grades. Um, on top of that, the new teachers have to learn how to manage one-to-one -one devices throughout the building and also be prepared to um, log on to our learning management system to take online assessments. Um, so there's a lot that's thrown out at them at one time. Some of the things that we do uh, to try and help them um, manage all the technology um, that they're required to, to handle is that we take advantage of their um, personal learning communities each um, grade level has a designated PLC that they um, get together for once a week. And uh, with the um, assistance of the uh, administration, I uh, am at times often able to be released to attend that PLC and deliver content um, that way directly to a grade level team. Also, I do take advantage of um, staff meetings um, whether it be to the entire staff or we try and structure staff meetings at times with breakout sessions. So if there are a group of teachers who need um, to be introduced to say Dino, for instance, or the learning management system, or we're also an office 365 school and I can help them get their uh, one note class notebooks off the ground. That's another way we try and manage that. Um, there are, Another, uh, an additional way is we do have, when we have our district-wide uh, professional developments here at Bowen School, we've offered a just technology professional development that has a menu of options for teachers to decide which one is the most relevant for them. So they can um, go to or sign up for individual professional development sessions that can kind of target their specific needs at that time. So we try and, and again, this uh, couldn't happen without the administration understanding that, you know, as my role has changed from just being a computer teacher to a computer science teacher to a tech integration coach, um, to allow my schedule to kind of evolve along with um, what my, what the demands of my day to day job is in the building. So there's just a, a couple of different ways that we try and manage that. But it's not easy, for sure. Do you guys have anything to add, Melanie and Justin? Um, yeah, I we have a um, a two day teacher training before school starts, a new new uh, teacher training, and um, that seems to be very helpful. Where we're just kind of getting them into their accounts, showing them some basics. Um, and then I also, during our in-service days, put together a tech checklist because, you know, there are things that every teacher has to do just once a year. And we want to make sure, you know, you kind of forget if you only have to do it once a year. So they're able to go at their own pace. But yet the department chairs, because I'm at a high school, the department chairs, um, they're kind of serve as the PLCs where they can help the new teachers with that tech checklist as well. I'm available. And this year we added a new teacher mentor because um, we found that, you know, as schedules get busy in the beginning of the school year, it we don't want our, our new teachers to just kind of be um, left alone and overwhelmed. And so the new teacher mentor really helps uh, connect the instruction and the technology. Um, and it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited about that because I feel like we're a, a team now um, and it's not just on one person's shoulders to, uh, facilitate the training. I would say my biggest piece of advice is, is give them something to do. 
whether it's interact with what they're working with, or um, there's times in the past where I've done a training and then in order to get the rights to something, they, they, they have to have pass a quiz. Um, this year I tried something new. We have this huge enrichment program that I, that I build and run and, and we've been doing it for, I think this is year six, but I rebuilt it from scratch and there were a number of staff members that couldn't make it. So what I tried was a tool called Edpuzzle. Basically I recorded the video, put some questions on there and then let the, the remaining people work at their, their own pace. And, and, and all of them came to me and said they were happy. I was able to do it that way. They were able to get it the questions check. And, and so it's kind of just varying it up as much as I can. Yeah. Along with, with Justin just said, just like, I, I think we all know, just like our students, um, you know, they learn in so many different ways and, and with technology, especially um, as adults, we learn in lots of different ways. So I appreciate the fact that you, we use Ed puzzle as well. Then we find it a really valuable tool, but some, some teachers, want you side by side and, and follow step by step. Others feel like, you know, the online learning model works great for them. So um, yeah, just providing a multiple ways for them to access the content and the training is, is something we, I think all try and do as often as we can. Yeah, everyone definitely learns differently and that doesn't stop when they leave the classroom. Um, okay, Melanie, I will start with you on this next question. This was submitted by Deidre H. And she asked, what is the biggest instructional challenge you have faced with one-to-one -one devices for students and how are you responding? Um, this was a really easy question for me to answer. Um, we're in our seventh year of being fully one-to-one. -one, and I'd say our biggest instructional challenge is not focusing on the bright, shiny new tool. Um, we, the first year that we were one-to-one, -one, we did not have a technology coach. Um, and so we, we were just trying to figure it out. And so we kind of focused on the tools and the programs. Those took priority and not the uh, solid instructional strategies. The next year, our second year, um, they put me in as the technology coach. And since then, we've been trying to shift the focus um, to, you know, away from the bright, shiny new tool into um, integrating technology into in a, with a you know in a meaningful way um, we've had some administrative changes and so the consistency um, has not been maintained but uh, this year I, I think this is the year like we we are having a breakthrough we now have an instructional coach along with me the technology coach and the new teacher mentor that I talked about and so we're a real team and we're able to really <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, sorry. We're able to really focus on, um, you know, what are the themes that we're seeing? Um, our instructional coach found something called a teacher action plan that really kind of helped us, um, the teachers fill out, you know, what they wanted to uh, focus on. And we're able to really drive those into themes that, you know, we're seeing um, repeat themselves and formulate uh, PD around that and, uh, and help them focus on the, the strategies and, and the technology to support those strategies and not just, again, what's the new thing? I mean, we, we are both an Office 365 school and a G Suite school. We have so much it's overwhelming and when I go and try to teach those new um, teachers I really have to say okay what is you know the three big things they need to know um, but then you know it's easy to hear about the new thing ed puzzle flipgrid whatever and 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 say I want to use that but not really know how you want to use it um, and, and so we're really trying to focus on, okay, let's look at your lessons. And that's what the instructional coach is really helping with. And then we're working together and she'll refer them to me or I'll refer them to her. So I feel like we finally have that puzzle intact, um, the missing piece, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's, that was, that's been our biggest challenge. I agree with Melanie. It was an easy question. Our, our biggest challenge, once we kind of got up and running and the teachers got used to Google because we focused on Google training um, heavily those first year or two and getting people certified um, is really trying to increase the rigor. Um, and <clears throat> my boss put it very succinctly when she said, 
let's go beyond take making a digital version of the same worksheet. Let's, let's learn to utilize the tool for what it is and do more and go beyond. And that's where, we, where we've really tried to focus and try to take those next steps and understand, you know, what is learning and what are you doing on the device and how does the device facilitate that? Yeah, and I would, I would agree with both uh, Justin and Melanie also with our one-to-one -one devices. And going back to the last question, when you have turnover in staff, um, that just uh, makes it uh, more difficult for, first you have to make sure that the teacher's comfortable um, with, you know, all they're expected to be responsible for in, in regards to the device. And then also, because like Melanie said, there's, you know, a new tool comes, you know, online all the time, but um, is it just a tool, you know, that's going to substitute uh, the worksheet or, you know, can you kind of move through that, the whole SAMR model that we're all um, trying to, to really redefine the lessons by the, by um, the technology. And, and again, it comes back to just, you know, the, the objectives that you have for the lessons and, and why does technology fit to make that, to enhance it or to, um, you know, really uh, make those outcomes uh, more authentic for the students. Yeah, there was a really great book. Um, we did an optional book study this summer. Um, and I, there are lots of great books out there about blended learning, but this book I just felt um, was phenomenal um, and easy to read and that's Bold School. Um, and it's, uh, I think the subtitle is old school wisdom and new school technology and how, how that works together. And that's really been helpful. We're continuing to, um, you know, reference that book throughout this school year. Um, and it's, it's, uh, he just takes different, each chapter is like a different instructional strategy, um, and how to really, um, you know, uh, utilize a, a great blended learning environment. Um, so that, that, that was a really good help for us this year. Those are great tips and answers to that question. Um, next question is from Luke S. Um, Justin will lead with you. Um, what is the most effective strategy to get teachers to read my district technology updates? I roughly get 30% of teachers viewing my update for 10 or more minutes and I'd like to, to increase that number this year. Um, yeah, that's, that's a challenge. Um, and I admit in years past, I've been wordy and, and I've worked to, to, to get better with that. Um, I guess when I read this question, the first thought I had was, does, what's more important, the amount of time they're spending reading the update or getting the content? So what I focus a lot on is limit the number of times I'm sending the update out, put it in a place where it's easily viewable, so it's not just an email. So we have a, a course in Canvas that is our, so we call our staff home base, and that's where our announcements go. Um, so that if they need to reference it, they can go back to it and find it very easily without having to search email. Um, when I do put things out, it, I'm very cognizant of using heading text, um, short and sweet to the point, and then I really try to focus on why does it matter to them? You know, if it's something that doesn't matter that, to them today and <clears throat> they really don't need to hear it in an email, it could be something that can be dis discussed in person later. So it's just trying to be very strategic with those, those updates and really focus on getting the content and making sure it's done in a way that they're going to get it quickly. And I, I don't care as much about the time as much as they, that they get it. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Melanie. No, you go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say, um, much like Justin said, we, we do have a, a home base site also for uh, staff. We use, um, it's, a, it's through Office 365, we use one of the um, sites for um, the school, and then we also uh, create working groups or collaborative groups um, through Teams um, for, uh, to archive all of that, um, the updates and the PDs and and whatever um, instructional screencast videos we may have for them. And then also we utilize um, every grade level has a team captain. And sometimes that's my first, uh, the first contact person I have on that team. Um, and then they can, especially using it, usually the team captain is the 
a more veteran uh, teacher on the grade level, and then they can figure out how to approach um, the new staff members that may be on their team and uh, kind of just roll it out uh, in a gentle way uh, until um, we have to kind of um, get everybody on board um, uh, to, you know, head in the same uh, learning environment. So, yeah, we try and take advantage of that as often as we can. Yeah, I was just going to add to that. Um, I, I agree, you know, with the idea that you need to really be cognizant of um, how much information you're giving. Um, we have a one note notebook, a staff notebook, and um, it has all of uh, the resources, instructions, things like that. And I drive them to that notebook as much as I can uh, by copying a link to whatever page it's on so they can just be taken straight there. And we have a weekly um, newsletter that goes to all the staff. So I really have to think about, okay, I don't want to give them more than three bullet points of information, but I'll include links to, um, you know, anything that's in that notebook. And then if they have a question, because maybe they didn't read it, I'll, when they email me, I'll send them again to the notebook. And I've had teachers now who email me say, I checked the notebook and I didn't find anything. So I mean, I, you know, I just feel like driving them to one place has been really helpful for us. I, I want to follow up. We've, what's been successful for us is we have a Google Doc that's our weekly update. Um, and there are a number of us around the school that have edit rights to that, you know, with the understanding that it's coming out Sunday morning at eight o'clock. And, and that's really, like you said, Melanie, keep it two or three very distinct points. And I've got a little section in the bottom right that that's for the technology. You know, if it's something that's bigger that needs to go beyond just the technology, we've got the principal section first and, and she'll add it up there. But driving everybody to one place and keeping it very succinct has been, has helped a lot. Those are great answers. Um, okay, moving on to the next question from Bridget D. Um, Daniel, we'll start with you. How do you balance getting new teachers up to speed and keeping experienced teachers moving along? This is similar to the first question, but yeah, I mean, the, right now, this time of year, um, and with, with the amount of technology in our school, I think for a lot of us, it's just getting the devices online, managing. We talked a little earlier about um, some of the roadblocks we, we run into with, whether they're new devices or devices that are being rolled over to another grade level and reassigned to students or, you know, network issues or whatever it may be. Um, I've been spending the, the first couple of weeks just running from one classroom to the other trying to, to troubleshoot as many problems as I can before we have the district tech, um, technicians come in and try and, you know, see what they can manage as well. So that can be, that alone can be just overwhelming for uh, new teachers as well as veteran teachers too, because if they were used to one model uh, the previous year, just for continuity's sake, they may have a whole different type of, you know, laptop or device um, in front of them that they have to get their students ready to, to assign with. So, um, like I mentioned before, I, I do take advantage of um, their PLCs uh, when the grade level is all together. And I kind of just listen to um, what the needs are um, for the team and then for the individual teachers. And because of the way my schedule has been managed, I'm actually, um, um, I'm also able to embed myself in the classroom to work collaboratively with the teacher um, and to kind of coach them through um, getting the students to log into their class notebooks or in their learning management systems or whatever tool the teacher has decided they wanna try um, to enhance their lesson with the full knowledge that it could fail, you know, miserably in front of, you know, the entire class and that that's a learning experience for the students because that's what, you know, doing computer science and using technology is all about. You, you make lots of mistakes and each mistake leads you to a success. And then that success allows you to make more mistakes and you just keep on moving that way. And um, when they see that, it helps them to manage their own frustration with the device or whatever project they're working on. So I think my main point would be just to listen to what their actual needs are and to going back to 
what you what we all put in our updates for the teachers to kind of like filter it don't let it you know don't let it come at them all at once and just target one thing at a time and uh, give them whether it's the whole group or me just coming in and leading a lesson or us working together do you guys want to add anything or is that pretty much sum it up I, the I wrote down it's a cliche but um, differentiation you know I don't want my veteran teachers who who know how we do things to feel like I'm wasting their time so mm -hmm. they'll, they'll get a brief bullet point make sure they understand a couple of nuances and move on um, and then the new teachers I'll pull in and, and spend more time with offer sessions for them that are optional um, and then just really check up on them make sure they're doing good and then I also tell the veterans you know help your new people out you know you guys are there with them you're working side by side spend the extra time to make sure they're good as well that totally makes sense one thing that i've heard in speaking with tech coaches a lot is that the way that you instruct is so much more important and impactful than the technology you're instructing so yeah. i think that really stays in tune with that message. Um, okay, our next question is from Sarah B. Um, Melanie, we'll lead off with you. How quickly do you jump into your co coaching cycles? The beginning of the year for me requires a lot of upfront work, such as getting our iPad fleet up and running. Yeah, I, um, first of all, <laughs> I feel your pain. Um, I'm sure we all do. Uh, and I think this question really goes well with the last question. Um, so I'm also a librarian, like I said, there are a lot of moving parts at the beginning of the school year, so much to, you know, try to get in place and, and back up and running. Um, something that has really helped us this year and our instructional coach found it, um, or in her, you know, studies, uh, this was something that she thought would be really successful and it's called the teaching action plan. And it um, allows them, so basically, she uh, introduced it at our beginning of the school year in service and gave them until after Labor Day to complete it. It has five areas on it. Um, so it's professional development, um, planning and activities, students and classroom management, um, communication and time management, and uh, classroom environment. And so they were able to look at those areas and decide what they wanted their priority to be in each area. Um, and, I, and I loved the teaching action plan because it really focuses on the whole teacher. Um, and so now we've collected that information from them. We've looked through and found recurring themes and that's setting our PD plan for the rest of the year. She'll be meeting with them individually and kind of talking about their action plan. That's the next step. But we are putting together, this is something else that she found, a PD bingo. And so there's that differentiation that Justin was talking about. Um, and we'll have different elements on that PD bingo that relate to the recurring themes um, that we're seeing, but yet they get to decide which piece they want to uh, pursue. So um, that's kind of how our coaching cycle is going for this first semester. That's awesome. Yeah, Daniel, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say one of the, one of the, um, different things for our district is that we um, have partnered up with the University of Massachusetts Amherst for uh, uh, for this grant um, called CS for All and uh, teachers in different grade levels, uh, grade level bands, uh, kindergarten and third grade teachers and then second grade and fourth grade teachers um, have written lessons that integrate computer science um, and then those lessons are now being uh, given to um, our early adopters in those grade levels. Um, and they're required to, um, or asked to as best they can, um, do the lesson with their class um, uh, throughout different quarters of the year. So we are, we're targeting specific um, computer science standards in each of the uh, different um, quarters. So there's, uh, for us, um, in, to some degree, there's uh, more of a directed kind of um, uh, curriculum, that, or not curriculum, but just the, uh, the standards that we're trying to address. And um, 
And just like I think we all feel, it's it's been a challenge to find the time to get ready to, for the students to be ready to kind of accept those um, those new ideas while they're still just trying to get used to their device and learning where to click and how to get the content that they need. Um, so, um, yeah, but again, I, I always go back to just the fact that the teacher, giving the teachers, you know, uh, the realization that, you know, everything they try uh, from the very beginning, it's not going to work or they're going to learn how it doesn't work and how it can work better the next time um, and feeling just comfortable in, um, in that kind of state of being right now. And it'll change. A lot of trial and error at the beginning of the year. <laughs> um, okay, and then Justin, our last question is from Maureen D. How, uh, she wants to know how to meet the teachers with instructional technology support when their schedules are already full of other stuff like meetings and planning. I think there's been a theme already in today's webinars is this is a challenge. Um, you know, at the start of the year, um, I'll offer sessions, I'll make them optional so that if they need it, they come. Um, but once the year gets going like we are now, my door's open. So it's, it's right now it's a lot of, some, they're bringing me a computer and say, this won't do this or this, you know, I need help with this. Um, and then <clears throat> once we get started, it's, it's really trying to be strategic about when, you know, so if it's something that the, the whole staff needs to, to hear, we'll wait for a staff meeting. Um, so like at the beginning of this year, what I did was I created a tech to do list of those four or five things that we had to have done at the start of the year or by this point. Um, and, and, I even went as far as printing it out and having a tangible thing. You know, people always laugh that the tech guy is giving them a piece of paper, but there's something to be said for having that, that they can hold on to and then check off as they go, you know. Um, and then getting it out in a lot of ways, whether it's through an email, part of the principal's update, you know, just kind of getting the information out. Um, you know, last week we did um, our, our training for our enrichment program. So it was one of those come during your planning period and, you know, we'll spend the time we need to go through everything. But then I had people who couldn't make it. So that's where I utilized the Ed puzzle and sent out the video to those who didn't make it and say, complete this by a certain date. And again, it's just being very dynamic and trying to find as many ways as possible to get it to them and, and work with them without overwhelming them more. Yeah, I think as many optional things as, you know, um, and lots of a variety. And here's one thing that we're doing um, that I, seems to be working well, and it doesn't require really um, prep on a lot of prep on anyone's part. We do lunch and learns and they're on Fridays and we tell the teachers, you know, you don't have to bring your device, just come sit eat your lunch and listen. And we kind of do two to three minute class hacks. Um, for example, one teacher um, decided that uh, she had used um, the Windows Shift S snip um, and found that you can now write on it. And she showed how she used it to um, let a student, students who were absent know what work they missed. Um, it was super short and simple. I had something in that one note notebook for them to refer to later. Some people brought their devices, some people didn't. Um, but hopefully they'll spread the word. You know, guess what I learned at Lunch and Learn or look at this and that's, that's how it'll go. So it's, it's kind of organic. And I, I don't think overwhelming, and um, we hope to, you know, continue that throughout the year. Yeah, and along with that, just uh, going back to when um, our staff meetings, we do make opportunities for um, any staff member to share one thing that they um, were successful with uh, regarding technology. And again, it could be uh, one of the simplest things, like they learned how to do something new with their smart board or bright link or whatever interactive board we have in the building um, at the moment. Um, or it could be something uh, more, you know, complex with, uh, with their class notebook and how to um, annotate assignments or, or create an assignment for that matter. Um, but having, having the staff as a whole see um, not only how different grade levels are using the technology kind of, informs them about what they might be able to expect their students to be able to handle already when they come to their grade level as well. 
Awesome. Um, so that is all of the discussion questions that we had um, today to fit in. This is the time for anyone who is joining us to submit any question you have while you do that. Um, I'm just going to ask all of you, Melanie, Justin, Daniel, what would be one piece of advice or one actionable thing that tech coaches who are listening, you would give to them for the beginning of the school year or the rest of the semester? Um, I, I would say find support somewhere, whether it be another tech coach, um, some someone that you uh, follow on Twitter, um, and reach out. I, I'm a part of uh, the Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert Community, and um, I am inspired every day uh, by the communication with them. Because as you see with the three of us, no matter how big your district is, there are um, challenges and some of the same challenges and just discovering, you know, what they did and no need to reinvent the wheel, right? We borrow um, from and share with each other. So yeah, definitely find a support group. I'll, I'll piggyback on that, that the support group is, is huge. Um, but the other thing that um, build capacity in, in the people in the building, you know, have those people that our support and understand the skills and are an outlet for people. So if somebody's down in the hallway and they need help and they know the person across the hall is very good with Google Drive, they have someone else to go to. And, you know, in our roles, we've got a lot of people coming from a lot of different directions. So building capacity around the building has really, really helped me. It's something I focused the last year and a half on so that once they are learning it, they're teaching the others and they become the experts and, and, and that network of support. Um, that's been really, really big for us here. Yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. Uh, just using all the teachers in the building as a resource and, um, and they usually um, receive that um, help or that professional development uh, much easier when it's from somebody that, um, you know, they share a hallway with or um, a grade level with. And also for me, um, one of the biggest things is just to have administrators um, understand what the role uh, should be or can be um, in the building. Um, as a tech coach, you know, having, having a principal or, or um, you know, a, a teacher leader understand that um, there needs to be some time built in for us to be available to have that open door policy um, instead of, um, and releasing us to kind of get into the um, classrooms and work directly side by side with the teachers um, can only make the staff just feel more comfortable when the next challenge comes around. Those are some great pieces of advice. Um, doesn't look like we have any questions from the audience, so I think we'll start to wrap this up. Um, thank you, all of you, for joining us. Um, really appreciate the discussion. I think it was great. Hopefully, everyone listening has some great takeaways from this. Um, if you submitted a question and didn't have it answered today, you will receive a follow-up email um, with an answer to your question. So, um, and we will be releasing the webinar recording by the end of the week. Um, we also, just a small plug for Dino, we just released our new website this past Monday. So feel free to go check it out, subscribe to our blog. We're releasing a lot of tech coach content. Um, we're really putting a lot of work into supporting tech coaches this year. Um, follow us on Twitter, we'll have a lot there as well. Um, all of our panelists are on Twitter as well, if you want to follow them. Um, Melanie, I know you're super, super active. Um, so we love to see that. Um, anything else you guys wanna say to close it out? Have a great Thank year. You. Yeah. Good and uh, so nice to, to be able to, I learned, I learned, I learned myself today. So thank <laughs> you for letting me be a part of yeah. this. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Have a great rest of your semester. I'm sure we'll all talk soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.